Hi, this is Kirk, the Bariatric Carnivore. Well, let's talk about some non-scale victories. What are some really cool, weird, crazy things that seem to happen after you switch to a low-carb diet? And when I say a low-carb diet, that can be carnivore, keto, you know, carnivorous, I don't care. I mean, if you're not eating processed foods and you're keeping your carbs down to 20 to 40 grams or so a day, then that means with non-processed food. And you're doing some other positive things like getting rid of processed seed oils, you know, Crisco, uh, shortenings, stuff like that, where you're no longer eating food fried in uh, factory fats, basically, you're going to start seeing some really weird changes. And some of them you may not be ready for. I mean, when I started going low carb seven years ago and I got rid of vegetable oil and started switching to more avocado, coconut oil and stuff like that, eating more keto, some really peculiar things happened. And this is back seven years ago. There weren't a lot of video channels out there talking about this stuff. So let me share with you some, you know, kind of major non-scale victories that did happen to me. The biggest one, and this one was really striking to me the very first year was I gave up uh, vegetable oils and was starting to eat no pro no processed food in January. Every year in Oklahoma, about you know, sometime close to April, I'll go out and do some yard work in a short sleeve shirt and forget how much time I'm spending out there. And I would get a horrible sunburn on the back of my neck face arms every single year um, because you know it's spring and I'm a fair-skinned person you know of Irish extraction so you know not a lot of melanin in the skin and I burn every single year and then slowly but surely I could stay out in the sun a little bit longer but it, it always seemed to happen no longer this is the weirdest thing. I am no longer photosensitive. I I noticed it the very just about six months in the in eating this new diet. Um, I go outside and I realize that it's March, April, May. I've been working out in the yard. I'm outside, and I'm not getting burned. For the first time in my life, that happened, and. It, it, it really was shocking and I so I started extending that out you know just walking around without sunscreen on slathered all over the place I wasn't burning anymore now I'm not saying I'm stupid it's not like I'm going down to the equator and you know running around naked you know for five or six hours trying to burn myself but I really seriously I don't get sunburned anymore and a year and a half ago in January uh, I was down in Belize and went s swimming, diving, all that type of stuff. Wasn't running around with a shirt on all the time. I'm not near the equator. I am near the equator in January, coming from Oklahoma. And we had no sun to full sun. Didn't get burned there either. Never wore sunscreen. So maybe you're. One big non-scale victory that you may see is if you've always been fair-skinned and you've always been photosensitive, you may not be anymore. And I know after listening to different YouTube channels now and reading from other people's testimonials, this seems to be a constant. There's a lot of people, I don't jump into it immediately, but you know, pay attention to it. You may find yourself significantly less photosensitive than what you were. Speaking of non-scale victories, let's talk about the scale and what the lack of importance of it. I mean, it used to me that the way I gauged how well I was doing was the scale itself. I was looking at weight, and that was my major indicator of my overall health. And what I have found is that's no longer a really good metric. Uh, the metric that counts more than anything else is how long am I clothes fitting and what's my waist circumference? the weight doesn't really make a difference because frankly my the amount of lean tissue I'm producing I'm lifting weights I'm doing stuff I can have a lot more muscle there are times when my weight has gone up to 220 when I'm doing a lot of heavy lifting 
and things that but my clothes fit absolutely the same so don't let your weight you know, don't let the scale determine if you're being a success or not that is probably the least important metric that you can follow look at the you know tape measures and how well your clothes are fitting and if they're getting looser or not like that and frankly you know not everybody that gets on a keto diet loses weight as far as the scale is concerned I mean, some people are so have such a lack of lean tissue because they don't get adequate protein and they've been eating vegetable based stuff that they're actually going to be gaining weight initially because their body is putting on muscle and bone and getting caught back up and don't so don't worry about the scale as much as you should your clothes and how they're fitting that really should be the most important thing to you of all as far as indicating how well you're doing. You know, the scale moving one way or the other really doesn't mean a whole lot to me anymore. So that's a peculiar one. Here's another crazy thing that happened. Uh, and I noticed this one the very first spring after I switched. Uh, I used to take three allergy meds, over-the-counter allergy meds, every single day. I took the purple one, the green one, and the blue one every single day well after i started uh eating low carb i you know everything kind of ran out and i wasn't feeling itchy i didn't feel bad so i just kind of put off going to walgreens to go refill that stuff and all of a sudden i'm getting into springtime the height of allergy season and Everybody around me that I know is dying of allergies. Their eyes are watering and itching, etc. And it's dawning on me. I'm not taking anything and I don't have any allergy symptoms. Now, I don't think it had anything to do with the medicine or lack thereof. I think it's because there's an ant. When you are eating a standard American diet, your body is highly inflamed, which makes you more susceptible to this type of stuff. So, the allergy symptoms went away and that was just fantastic to go through now almost seven years and not needing allergy meds and not getting colds and coughs like I used to. I mean, you know, the cold and flu season used to hit and I would usually have a really bad upper respiratory infection every fall and every spring and I haven't had that going on for close to seven years and I don't have the allergy symptoms and I don't take allergy meds anymore either which is a really big plus another weird thing that's going to happen to you when you go keto carnivore eat starting eating low carb getting rid of processed food no longer eating a standard American diet the amount of trash you produce is going to go down pretty dramatically I mean, if your social life is built around taking out the trash, you know, you're going to have a problem. <laughs> I hope, hopefully, nobody has that problem. But, um, but you will significantly reduce the amount of trash that you produce if you're not eating food out of containers. You know, if you're not eating processed food, it reduces the amount of waste that you produce pretty dramatically. And when I switched from going uh, keto, where I was eating vegetables and throwing away you know stuff that rotted went bad etc and it was pretty much carnivore the amount of waste dropped down even more i mean I, there's not much meat left when i'm done i mean it's you know what's thought out gets eaten it's pretty dramatic and you know and if there's bones those are going to be used for bone broth very little gets wasted so one of the cool things that you may find out is you're going to reduce a lot of waste and if you're paying for it it's not bad it will reduce that cost pretty significantly if you if depending on where you live another area that might change that you need to be aware of is your eyeglasses if you wear glasses your prescription will probably change maybe about six months into this um, if you're like me you know there's if you're pre type 2 diabetic or diabetic the back of your eye is going to have problems you know that's that's delicate tissue back there the blood vessels are delicate inflammatory stuff happens it's going to be inflamed 
in the back of your eye. And what's interesting, you know, while you know, the lens of your eye may not change, the macula, the, the ability of your brain to be able to see those images may improve so much that it may actually shape, reshape your vision and make it much better. Um, so plan on seeing your doctor. You know, if you, once you've been sticking to this diet for about six months, you're probably going to need to see your eye doc about get, changing your prescription. Things, you know, your my eyesight improved pretty dramatically. I was up the upper end of the contacts that they could give me for you know I was pretty much legally blind without wearing these contacts, and you know they were we were looking for specialty contact people to get them. Uh, for the next layer and I they've actually gone down I can actually get more easily available cheaper contacts because I don't have to get the higher end ones anymore because my visions actually improved pretty dramatically my eye doc still can't quite figure out how in the heck that happened but it did so you know if you've been progressively getting worse every year you might find that it may install or get better now that you're on a keto, carnivore, low-carb diet, no longer eating processed foods. I mean, these are all pluses to the stuff, but let me give you this caveat. How do you know if these things are happening? Well, one of them is, you know, I've, I've given you some awareness, so you know if it's happening. But number two, you really do need, when you make a lifestyle change, you have to give it 60 to 90 days. That's just, you know, it takes a while for your body to adjust. I mean, we're so used to taking a medicine, taking a drink, and getting a change in our physiological response. And that's not going to happen with a lifestyle change. It really does take 30, 60, 90 days to really give it a fair test. So be aware of that too. And let's talk about the final change that you may get. And I hope you do. If you are addicted to alcohol, tobacco, or illicit drugs, you might find that you are able to quit after you've been do cleaned yourself up, after you've cleaned up your diet. Once you've gotten rid of this highly inflammatory food, I, I've often wondered, I don't know about enough about addictions and nobody does really. But oftentimes it seems like people are utilizing illicit drugs, alcohol or tobacco to medicate for something else. And when you make yourself healthier by getting rid of the processed food, getting, changing your standard American diet, you might find that you're able to overcome an addiction to something much easier than you could before. I've quit drinking and I've quit vaping since I've been on low carb. And frankly, I don't think I could have done either apart from being healthy at that time. So it, it seems to happen with some folks that they start getting healthier, they start eating a, this type of diet, the inflammation goes down, it makes it possible for people to overcome addictions. I'm not saying it's guaranteed, but these are some positive non-scale victories you may see in your own life. So do me a favor. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe. If you've been doing this for a while and you've noticed something weird happening, share it. I mean, other people might, might, might want to be aware of it. It might encourage some people to give this way of eating a try. The reason why I'm putting out this video is, look, not everybody I know that's watching this video is eating low carb. They're still eating a standard American diet. Maybe these are issues that you're having problems with. You don't like taking all the allergy meds. You don't like getting sick every year. And you may want to give it a try and see if this year's cold and flu season gets better. If you can get out in the sun more, if your eyesight improves, you might be able to overcome addictions. I don't know, but frankly, there's no downside to eating a proper human diet and getting stronger. I mean, one of the things that I know is gonna happen, when you start eating a carnivore diet, 
you know, and you start getting the protein amounts that your body needs when you're eating meat to satiety and you're no longer hungry, you're going to be building on muscle. You're going to be putting on lean mu uh, body tissue. You're going to be building bone. And that is the stuff you need for healthy aging. So there's no downside to it. But you're going to find some other really cool little crazy things that are going to help make your life better. You know, hopefully, I don't really have a problem with autoimmune diseases, but I know a lot of people that have overcome them utilizing a proper human diet. So, this is Kirk, the Bariatric Carnivore. I'm trying to put out a couple messages a couple of times a week. Sometimes work keeps me from doing it, but sometimes not. I try to put out that many messages every single week. I will talk to you again soon.